Bye. Hi, my name is Allie Mitchell, and this is my first performance in theater, and I'm so glad to have the opportunity. Aside from theater, I also enjoy doing soccer. Shout out to my mom and dad being my biggest fans. And I want to thank everyone for watching the performance, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Parker Hemmings, and I play the role of Thomas Custer in the play Alternate. This is my first year in theater, and I want to give a big shout out to everyone who helped make this possible. Thanks. Hi, I am Lily Hendricks. I play General Victoria Hayes, student one, and the tour guide. I've been doing theater for roughly four years at Cascade, and I want to give a big special thanks to all of you for coming and supporting the show. Our amazing writer and co-director, Allie J. Nicholson, and just all of us. Isaac is a junior at Cascade Christian High School. He enjoys tennis, theater, and underwater basket weaving. He would like to thank Red Robin for fueling his many nights, and Sior, his closest companion. Isaac would like to thank everyone for coming to the show tonight, and he hopes that you enjoy it. Hello, so my name is Rose, and this is my first time doing a play at CCS, and I play Mrs. Windsor, Peggy Novak, and the Lawyer. And thanks to my sister and Art for even making me think about going on stage again. Hi, I'm Maya. I'm a junior, and I've been doing theater at Cascade since second grade. My favorite production has been Radium Girls, and I would like to thank all of my castmates for being the absolute best and for always being there to have fun. Hi, my name is Willa Sakura, and I'm playing the role of Lake. I've been in three Cascade Christian productions, and my favorite production was playing an interpreter and an actor for four different roles in 13 Ways to Fail a College Interview. I would like to thank my family and friends for their encouragement and support all through this difficult time with performing a play over technology. Hi, I'm Sydney Kelso, and I'm playing the counselor, Miss Hale, and student three. This is my first show at Cascade, and a uh, special thanks to my parents for helping me learn my lines and Allie Jankelson for writing this play. Hi, my name is Allie Jankelson, and I wrote and co-directed the play Alternate. Some of my past theater experiences include Happy Valley High, 13 Ways to Screw Up Your College Interview, Radium Girls, and Susicle Jr. In the fall of 2020, I will be attending Valdosta State University in Valdosta, Georgia to study ASL interpreting and translating. Thank you to everyone who made this happen. Hello, my name is Ali Redford. I'm a junior and I have the privilege of stage managing the show Alternate. Um, I have stage managed two of the shows at Cascade, Sukukul and Young Sherlock and I've done a bunch of shows at Liquid Playhouse. Um, I have loved having the privilege to do this show even though it's not actually on stage. So it's been really cool to do it in another format and actually do it instead of it getting canceled. And I hope you like the show. Bye. I'm Juliet Goodman and I play the role of stage or the sound effects for the play Alternate. I'd like to thank everyone who encouraged me to go out for theater my first year at Cascade. One of the things that I love most about working for Cascade Christian is that everything we're doing is for advancing God's kingdom. Everything we do here at the district office impacts all the students at all the other campuses. One of the words that comes to mind when I think about Cascade Christian Schools is the word dedication. I'm often humbled at seeing the sacrifices that are being made. So the love, the encouragement that is just being shared with each relationship is, it, it's truly amazing. It's sort of a small school feel, but with big school opportunities. You know, full sports programs, yeah. full um, opportunity for coursework. And at CCS, we're all about developing discerning leaders in a culture where people feel known and valued. Part of our approach to achieving that objective is through what we reference as our educational roadmap, which is simply just a process for our teachers and our staff to get to know our students on a highly personal level, to know their, their strengths, their skills, their preferences, and to partner with them in their journey to become discerning leaders. All the campuses work together so we can come 
together as um, a Christian family and uplift people when we need to and uplift our students and our families. I have a ton of fun here every day interacting with our kids and I think we have a really fun uh, group of people. And really at the end of the day, I think it's all about Jesus. I really enjoy the privilege of just coming alongside these kids and their families. We have a great time and a great school. Alternate is based off my own life. Writing is my outlet, especially when things get tough, and believe me, things get tough. My dad died last year in January, and after him, everything became a nightmare. Cheer, school, I even dropped a class to pick up creative writing independent study in Mrs. Bird's office. But I escaped to theater, and Miss Severide offered me to direct a play. And I thought I'd do her one better, I'd write a play. I took my creative writing class and I just started writing and within the first month I had a draft. Even my favorite scenes are the ones where I just vent. Well, I really like to encourage student leadership in the theater department. I think it gives students an opportunity to try something they might not otherwise have a chance and maybe to develop some God-given talents and abilities. So when Allie Jankelson told me that she wanted to write a play, I jumped at the opportunity to work with a developing playwright and an amazing young woman on this brand new work of theater. So we've been working on it for about a year, a bit over a year now, and she's brought me a few drafts to look at. So I've been able to advise and watch her talent develop, and that's been such a privilege. And now she's co-directing the play with me, and I'm so excited for you all to see it. I'm sure you're gonna love it. We had no set, so all the visual humor just went out the window including all of our set changes that will show you the location. We compromised by having stage directions being narrated at you so that you would know where you are and what's happening and who else is there. Another challenge was some of the blocking just kind of got left out because we couldn't do it without being visually there. Another thing is I had to change a couple of lines and rewrite it as soon as I saw it because some of it was, again, visual. All the visual stuff that you would see on a stage just wouldn't have happened. Well, just like everyone else during this time, we're trying to do everything that we do in life from home. So everyone's created their own little home studio in their bedroom or whatever corner of the house they could eke out for this purpose. And so that's been a challenge. And we've got, um, you know, kids, dogs, chickens, all sorts of interesting things interrupting our rehearsals. But that's been really fun, too. So there have been a lot of challenges, but the cast has really risen to it and I think their performances are very nuanced and really special, and I'm really proud of you guys. Well, it definitely wasn't what I imagined, but I knew I wouldn't let this play go down without a fight. We decided that we would stage it as if it was going back on stage, and stage it as if it was going to be a Zoom production. And two rehearsals in, we got the notice that school wasn't coming back for the year, so we immediately switched to Zoom. The transition itself was kind of rough, but we got it down pretty quickly because the world is our stage. Well, we had lots of great plans for putting this show on stage with an amazing set and costumes and lots of interesting blocking uh, with the action on stage. So transitioning to a format where we're online, just looking at heads and shoulders of our actors and trying to understand how the medium of theater becomes something that's a little closer to film, but still retains its spirit of theatricality has been interesting. Um, but it's also been a really fun thought experiment to try to understand a new way to create art.
Well, we had an hour rehearsal every day, but we only did one scene a day. Well, that was a little bit easier since we didn't have to really worry about blocking except for in this little space. It was kind of difficult because sometimes we'd get sidetracked or sometimes people would be late or sometimes I would get a random text being like, I can't find the link, where's the link? But in the end, it was really fun. Really, we just dove in and knew we wanted to do something with the play and figured it out as we went along. And as God has a way of doing, he provides for the needs that you don't even know you have. And in this case, we needed somebody who knew how to handle technology. And we had a wonderful volunteer parent come forward, Gary Schatzwell. So everything you see here, as far as the technological elements are thanks to Gary. And we are all so, so grateful, Gary, thank you. identical girls stand opposite of one another. The counselor breaks the silence. Elizabeth, how are you feeling today? What's there to tell? I don't feel any different. Tell me what happened again. We were driving. It was dark and rainy. We were listening to that one journey song. I saw the headlights first. Dad swerved. He called me Elizabeth. He called me Elizabeth. He never calls me Elizabeth. He calls, he called me B. I can't hear my own name the same anymore. I blacked out. The next thing I know, there are cops everywhere. One tells me what happened. Your dad is dead. Your dad is dead. Sometimes I can't remember it correctly. Sometimes I'm on the wrong side of the car. Sometimes I see a figure. Sometimes I think it was raining. I don't know, I must be crazy. Liz, it's time to go. Ruby. Oh, hello, Lillian. I haven't seen you since... Never mind. Um, you remember my daughter, Liz? She was only in here every other weekend. What can I do for you? Um, we're just here to pick up some of James's things. Of course. 
When are you launching the door frame? That's classified. What? Why? Everything is under lock. Besides, it might be better if you didn't come. It's too close to James. Hey, Beth? Go away. Uh, um, what are you doing? Writing an essay. It's about how a family member's death motivates me to succeed at MIT. It helps my IQ. Thomas, you're leaving? You know I couldn't stay for long. College is a wreck and I can't afford more days off. You should go back to school too. I, I just need more time. Let's start moving on. It's better for all of us. We're here for you. No matter what, B. Please state your name for the court. My name is Elizabeth Marie Custard. My name is Elizabeth Marie Custard. A lab files end with scientists rushing about. A glowing arch stands in the background, illuminating the scene. Ah, General Hayes, so glad you could make it. Of course. If you would follow me over here. Tell me how this works again, Miss Orwell. Right. It's a matter of quantum physics. We transfer the exact atoms of an object across the multiverse. The door frame just pulls it together. Ma'am, we're still looking for the infiltrator. Infiltrator? We should lock the place down. It could be blues. Already done. We'll find them. Let's boot it up. I'll send word to the president at once. We are honored by your research and your services. Of course. Who will be making first contact? Peggy Novak. She's almost here. We just need a few more observational machines to hook her up to. And here she is now. Novak, I would like you to meet General Victoria Hayes. Ma'am, General. Pleasure. Now we don't know what lies ahead, so be cautious. We don't know anything about this dimension. Your mission is to make contact with the scientists or their form of government. If anything goes wrong, come back immediately. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Um, do this for Lancaster. Make us proud. The door frame is opening in T minus five, four, three, two, one. Ow. Liz? Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I, I, I didn't even realize you were here. What on earth are you doing here? I, um, I, I wanted to come see the door frame. How did you even get in here? You would need special clearance and- Dad's ID. Oh, of course. It's mine now. Let's talk about this later, okay, Liz? You need to leave. I'm not leaving. I came to see the door frame. Miss Orwell, who's this? Elizabeth Custer, James's daughter. Uh, Liz? I'm here to talk about the door frame. Liz, what is she talking about? We will talk about this later. Wait here. Novak, you are good to go in T minus five. No, I want some answers. Three, two, one. It was never yours! Liz bolts to the door frame. What are you doing? Get back here, Liz! Liz passes through. Suddenly, the lights shut down and everything powers off. Ma'am, what do we do now? I want all hands on deck. Turn on the backup generators. I want every researcher to figure out what just happened. Ma'am, should we keep the door frame running? Shut it off! No, keep it running. We don't know if the girl has passed through successfully yet. A new singularity has been successfully established. The computers are down. Miss Orwell, what was that? Didn't you see it? See what? She had a file. Do you mean to tell me that girl stole one of your files from under your nose? I want every bookkeeper going through the files. Find out which one she took. Yes, ma'am. What's that supposed to mean? That girl, General Hayes, is our new problem. 
Lexington High School's hallway. Students are bustling about. And then I was all like, you shouldn't wear that because it's not your color. And she was all like, you can't tell me what to do and got really upset about it. Like, geez, if you didn't want criticism, don't wear something as ugly as that, you know? Welcome back to Mondays, the worst day of the week. Mondays are the worst because of your singing. It's 7 a.m. No one needs to hear it. Aw, did Maxie not have her coffee this morning? As a matter of fact, no, I did not. Wednesdays are the worst days of the week. <laughs> no way! Tuesdays are the worst days of the week. They're just second Monday, but worse. Right, Beth? You would be stupid to think that Wednesdays are the worst. Oh, right. <laughs> Every day is the worst day of the week with your life, Beth. Yeah, another tragedy could hit at any second. Keep it down. I don't want all of Lexington to know. Why does it matter? It matters to me. Look, can you just promise to keep it on the low? Okay, I promise, but only for you. Lake? Yeah, totally. My lips are sealed. Oh my goodness, Beth, you're going to love this. I was watching the news this morning and the cute reporter was talking with a group of students from MIT. Apparently they're working on something called Project Alternate. Project Alternate? I've never heard of it. That's because it's like super top secret. From what I've gathered, it's a huge step forward in communications. Just think, we can get messages from across the country. MIT? Yeah, MIT, keep up. My acceptance letter should be coming in any day now. You haven't sent your essay in yet, have you, Beth? No. You two talking about MIT makes me stressed. And speaking of stressed, Windsor's test is this Friday. I hate her tests. Gag me with a spoon. I still have to take that last one tomorrow. It's been a hard week. Seriously? Another hard week? This is the millionth hard week this week, and it's only Monday. It's just been a hard week, okay? I should retake that one. I only got an 87. The next time I hear you complaining about an 87, I am going to lose it. Hey, Beth, it's all cool for tomorrow, right? Tomorrow? What's going on tomorrow? I got the line that your mom and my mom were having a Sunday night gossip again, and she invited me over. Of course she did. Why didn't she tell me she invited you over? She's just worried. Plus, I'm your mom's favorite child. Don't remind me. You can come over too if you want, Maxine. My mom would be thrilled that I still have friends. Can't. I've got to work on that English project. Right. What English project? <laughs> did you forget? Oh, no, no, of course not. You did. I can't believe you forgot already. Jeez, take a chill pill. You're like a rubber band. <laughs> I'll see you in third. Come on, where are you? Students meander through a library. I need books on the Civil War, stat. Back again. Windsor. Of course. Students have been in and out all day today. Those books over there. Thank you, Miss Hill. Beth finds a book and sits down to study. Can I help you, Miss? Oh, I thought you already grabbed something. Uh, hello, my name is Liz. I, I come bearing no harm. Shh, some people are trying to study. Study? Study what? All sorts of things. We have lots of books here. So this is a bookstore of sorts? You could say that, except the books are free. Books are free? Oh, uh, right, right. Books are free? Where did you say you were from again? Um, can I have a book for free? Yeah, just check it out with me before you leave. Liz wanders around the library. Frustrated, Beth grabs her book and goes to check it out. Okay, you're Beth, or are you the other one? 
What? I'm Beth. Who else would I be? That is so funny. I just met another girl who looks exactly like you. I just want to check this out and go home. Will do. Here we go. Have a nice day, Beth. I'll try. Beth turns to leave and bumps into Liz. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, I, I would like to have these free books. Your Liz. I can only let you check out five books at a time, and I need to make you a card. Sorry, it's school policy. Oh. Um, who was that girl? That was Beth. You know, you two look like twins. I don't know why you haven't met her yet. Beth. Liz? Hmm? You forgetting something? Oh, right, right. Thank you so much for the free books. I, I've, I've got to go. Bye. Why do I get the feeling I'm never getting those books again? Liz Custard? The living room at the Custard's house. What do you want? Can somebody come into the living room just to see his baby sister? What do you want? Have you seen my keys? Staple them to your forehead. Haha, <laughs> thank you, Beth. I almost forgot to check. Why do you need your keys? Thomas, have you found them yet? Oh, hey, sweetie. Um, how are you doing? Really bad, thanks for asking. Um, do you two need anything, or...? No, just wanted to come annoy you. Congrats, you're doing an amazing job. Mom, can you tell him to stop being him? You know, Kieran invited us over tonight. Do you want to come with us? No, because Lake is coming over tomorrow and you didn't bother to tell me. Well, maybe it would be nice to get out of the house. Still no. Beth. Okay, um, okay. We'll be back in a jiffy, okay? Keys are on the hook. Oh, right. I swear I will staple them to you myself, Thomas. I knew it. You have my face. My name is Elizabeth. You can't be Elizabeth. I'm Elizabeth. I'm... Twin. No, what? No. But you look exactly like me. I'm not your twin. Are you my long-lost sibling? No, I'm you, but I'm not you. I'm your alternate. What? That sounded better in my head. I'm from an alternate dimension where my, well, our dad built something called the door frame. I'm calling the cops. No, wait. Don't talk about my dad. Please, just listen to me. Wait. I can't call the cops. Right. Nobody can know I'm here. That's it. I've lost it. I'm hallucinating. Yeah, that's right. No, no. I can explain, but you have to listen to me. I've lost my marbles. Hey, hey, hey. hey. No cops. Let's, let's just sit down and talk like normal people. But nothing about this is normal. Tell me about it. Wait, what happened to your arm? You're worried about my arm? You are a literal clone, and I am nuts! No! Look! We have the same bruise? What's that supposed to mean? Oh my- Did you poison me? I- I- I hit it on a table. What happened to you? It just appeared last night. I mean, this is- this is insane. This is crazy. I'm going crazy. This is insane. What am I going to tell mom? What about the Russians? Beth, I, I know it sounds crazy. I wouldn't believe me either. It does. Elizabeth, I know this is weird and believe me, it's weird for me too, but I can explain everything, okay? I can explain. Beth. What? Everyone calls me Beth. Liz.
Orwell sits at a desk in the lab. There are papers everywhere. We cannot have the Custer girl running around in some unknown dimension. I, who knows what's out there? Our main focus should be on rebooting the doorframe. You know, the greatest scientific achievement since man landed on Mars. No, our top priority should be getting this custard bag. She's in some alternate d dimension for Pete's sake. I'm well aware of that. Getting her back would be a lot easier if we had the program to get it running again. You mean you don't have it? The surge of power from the doorframe wipes most of our systems. I have programmers around the clock working to get the computers up and running. She doesn't have it. You don't have it either. Well, you better get it up and running soon. Why? Why should we protect some rebellious teenager when we could be figuring out the greatest achievement in history? Because no one remembers the second man on Mars. Well, no one remembers Lancaster either. If you'll excuse us, I'd like to talk with Peggy. Go on ahead. I'll just be here and go through all these files. Lillian, you have to get home. You're going to burn yourself out. You don't get it, James. We're so close. I can feel it. I do get it. But it's midnight. Your family must be worried sick. I know Ruby's going to get an earful when I get home. You can figure it out in the morning. It is morning. I'm figuring it out today, whether you like it or not. I guess I'll call Ruby. What for? Well, I'm staying. We're a team, Lillian. What do you have so far? <sighs> Nothing much. I had to turn off the spirit box. The buzzing was giving me a headache. What is a stupid spirit box supposed to do anyways? <laughs> well, it's supposed to go through radio frequencies, so a phrase or something gets created. Radioactivity might be the first way to contact them. Don't they use that for ghosts and superstitious people? Liz gave me the idea. Of course she did. We haven't gotten a coherent message. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the same stupid song. I think I'm gonna call it James Roll. So what you're saying is we have nothing? Was that not obvious? This isn't gonna get us anywhere. Believe me, I tried. Just looking at it from a new perspective. Communication is just one more step to traveling. Why are we wasting our time communicating with them when we could be going there and experiencing it for ourselves? Imagine what histories they have, the technology they possess. We could go instead of wasting time and resources. We just need to contact them to prove that parallel universes exist. Great, throw away my life's work. Did Liz give you that idea too? What can I say? She's a fan of Star Journey. What if we used quantum physics? Create a doorway through dimensions? How does that sound? Quantum physics, it's still relatively new. But it would work, right? Imagine the possibilities, James. Hey, you were dazed for a little while. What's on your mind? Just a memory, that's all. Did you happen to get the status on powering up the door frame? We're still having trouble. The program should be in one of these files. Wait a minute. Huh? What is it? James' personal file. It, it, it's not here. Liz. You think she took it? It's the only thing that makes sense. What was in that file? James' personal file had sensitive information, government sensitive information. Get the doorframe up and running as soon as possible. The living room. It's just a dumb file. Nothing big. I just use a portal to escape me towards a treason. No biggie. I'll just wait till Bud finds out. I grabbed us something. Oh, thank goodness. I was disappearing hungry. Did, did you know that when your atoms get rearranged, you throw up? Well, no, because I just did three times in two minutes. That's disgusting. It's science. I have so many questions. Um, 
how did you find me? I don't know. I, I guess I kind of just like knew where to go. Like something was pulling me to you. Like a magnet or may the force be with you kind of thing? Uh, well, well, magnets are a kind of force. So I guess you could say that. No, no. The force as in Star Wars. Never mind. Next question. Why are you here? I don't know. I thought you said you could explain everything. I did. I, I, I can. I'm here because, um, contact. Yeah, that's right. Contact. Contact. Yes. Right. Next question. Where are you from? The DRA, the Democratic Republic of America, more specifically Lexington Commonwealth. Well, welcome to the USA, the United States of America, more specifically Lexington, Massachusetts. Everything is so different here. Really? Like what? Like I've never seen a free bookstore before. (laughs) Those are called libraries. Oh. And I also ran into a couple kids next to a medicine store, but it didn't look like a medicine store. We call those drug stores here. I think you're thinking of a pharmacy. Wait, do you guys have New Coke? Yeah, why? I'm so sorry. See, everything is different. You've got libraries, drug stores, and not New Coke. I've got the opposite. Wait a minute. Were you, were you just wandering around until I got home? Well, not exactly. I, I mean, yes and yes and no. Which one is it? Yes or no? I mean, I, I kind of was, yes um, and, and no. I, I wasn't really wandering per se. I just had that weird feeling. Beth, I need to tell you something. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. I didn't think you were still up. Um. How are you doing? I'm fine, actually. I would like you to stop bothering me. I'm fine. Just studying. Oh. Um. Okay. Um. Beth? Yeah? That was close. You hid. I don't think it's a good idea for people to know I'm here. They might, like, freak out. You're right. People usually get arrested for this kind of stuff. Trust me. I've seen Terminator... At least twice. It would cause a widespread panic. Terminator? First things first, we can't be seen together. And even though I would love to stay home and learn everything about your dimension, I can't. I have school and stuff. Life is moving way too fast and I do not have time to take a break. Sorry, Ferris Bueller. (laughs) Ferris Bueller? I want to help you learn everything about this dimension, and I want to learn everything about yours. I'll go find us some more snacks. Oh, and let's not have any secrets between us. I want to know everything. Yeah, no secrets. Beth and Maxine take a test in Windsor's classroom. Done already? Wasn't too hard, actually. I thought hard tests were my thing. I guess I just have another project on my mind that I want to get to. It's that English project, isn't it? Not exactly. I recently heard something about alternate universes. Alternate universes? Like the multiverse theory? Yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm just curious. Beats English, I guess. I'm pretty well versed in the multiverse theory. I love philosophy. Really? Do you think you could help me? 
Of course. Schrodinger came up with it. He literally said it was crazy. It was that insane. It was insane. He theorized universes parallel with ours were happening at the exact same time as us, but with slight differences. Like... It's just differences. Like in one universe, I would make tests easy. And there are thousands of possibilities. That makes sense. I heard something about traveling across dimensions. Do you think that's possible? I mean, if there are thousands of possibilities, do you think at least one of the alternate universes figured it out? Hmm. I'm not sure science has advanced that far. It's just a theory. No one has ever even confirmed the existence of a parallel universe. But if it were true, could travel be possible? Hmm. Well, why not? Sure, you'll be the one to figure that one out. Well, I don't know about that one, but thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. And Beth, let me know if you need anything. Thank you, but I'm doing fine. Well, just let me know. Here. <laughs> that was fast. Both of you must really know your history. Yeah, I do. Miss Jones, can I have a word? What's this about? Your application to MIT. Liz is sitting in the living room with the file. Once she opens it, James appears. Hey, kiddo. Dad? Let me tell you. That picture did not do me justice. My eyes look so dead. Go away, you're just in my head making me think things. You don't have to do this, Liz. They can handle this. No, no, I can do this. It's, it's just really hard when I'm missing you. Hey, Beth, I'm home. Ah. Good, you're here. The door was unlocked, so I thought it was just chill to break in. It would be awkward if it was Thomas again. What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Uh, hi? Hi. Earth to Beth. You doing okay? Uh, wh what are you doing here? Studying, remember? We've got that test. You forgot, didn't you? Oh, right, 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 right. The, the test, that one test, yeah. US history? Another one of Windsor's awful tests. I don't know how you do it. Took one today and you're going to take another on Friday? No wonder you're stressed. Well, stressed is my middle name. Actually, it's not, it's Marie. So, Civil War or Great Depression? Civil War? Good call. I'm starting to hate the Depression. What war is civil? Um, the Civil War, I guess. Okay, well, maybe we should study something else. No, 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 no. Peaceful war is fine. It's chill. Sounds good. Lake? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Uh, Lake, that's, that's just your name. Lake. Yeah, it's been my name since I was born. Best birthday gift ever. It's way cooler than Elizabeth. No way, B. I'm named after water. You're named after at least two queens, I think. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Really? What? No, I'm, I'm fine. It's, it's just been a really hard week. That's all. No biggie. I'm chill. It's the test, isn't it? I knew we shouldn't have taken history. I know it's required and everything, but at what cost? Let's have no more history. None of it. Uh, n not even the um, respectful war? That's the spirit. Hey, what's this? Uh, those, are, those are just my notes for, for the test. Ooh, big scientist coming through. Even your notes are themed. <laughs> yeah, totally. What are you doing? I don't know. Come back here. Okay, okay. 
Here's an easy one. Who is the president? I'm going to go grab a drink. What? Uh, yes, I, I need something to drink. You don't need to tell me. This is your house. Unless it isn't. You never <laughs> told me you were living in somebody else's house. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. That was too close. I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I didn't know what to do. And then, and then she just walked in and I panicked. And I, I don't think I can keep this up. Okay. Okay. I'll tag you out. What? Never mind. Oh, and Liz, thank you. I thought you were grabbing water. I was. You didn't need to change clothes for that. The school hallway. So, why is Beth acting like all weird now? She hasn't come to chess club in a while. Well, she's kind of sort of been really mean lately. And distant. She won't say hi to me anymore. Haven't you heard? No. Heard what? You mean you really don't know? Okay, are you going to tell us or not? Only if you promise not to tell anybody. Three months ago, her dad died in a freak car accident. What? Oh my goodness. I know. Oh, I feel bad for her. When I lost my dog, I was like depressed for a week until she came back. Okay, okay, but that doesn't give her a reason to be rude to everyone. Don't say that. Going through something like that is awful. Besides, it's only been a couple of months. We should just give her some space. But it could have been worse. Think of the starving children in Africa. I went to Live Aid, so I should know. Oh, she didn't have to cut me up, though. She's been doing that a lot lately. She invited Lake over last night and didn't bother to invite me. And it's so hard to be around her when she's having a hard day. She can at least see I'm trying to help. Do you think she'll come back to chess soon? Our next meeting is Friday and I don't have a partner anymore. I doubt it. She'll probably just blow you off, too. Oh, I've got to go. Don't tell anyone. Students disperse and proceed to tell everyone. Hey. Hey, how did studying go? I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I was so busy. Uh-huh, sure. It went fine. Just weird, though. Beth has just been acting weird lately. It's probably, you know, the trauma. This was out of character weird. How so? It's probably nothing. Oh, hey, Lake was just telling me how yesterday went. Hey, Beth, you look really tired. I pulled an all-nighter. Working on that English project or the other one? Other project? It's, it's nothing. You have to get it together, Beth. You can't keep forgetting about homework. One bad grade isn't going to ruin me. I just need more time. It isn't going to get you into MIT. I'll see you two later. This is why I hate Wednesdays. Why? Because Maxine is more Maxine than usual? Because bad things usually just happen on Wednesdays. I've, I've got to get to class. I'll see you later. Yeah, okay. See you later, B. B. Dad? I used to call you that all the time. That doesn't matter now. I have to keep moving forward. I can't lose focus. MIT won't accept this. I can't accept this. Is that what you think? Or is that what Maxine thinks? Why do you care? You're not here anymore. You're just in my head. I do care, B. I love you and... Don't let yourself forget that. MIT or not, I'm proud of you. You should be here telling me that to my face, not, not like this. I know. 
the living room. How was school? It's a Wednesday. I get it. Wednesdays are the worst. You get it? Yeah, bad things just happen on Wednesdays. Yeah. So, I've been thinking. There are infinite possibilities with an alternate universe, right? Right. I was wondering, well, more like hoping, that you could tell me about Dad. Dad. Yeah, if there are infinite possibilities, maybe... No. What? Whatever you're thinking, it won't work. (laughs) You don't even know what I was going to say. Yes, I do. You think that he's alive in my universe. How did you... Wait. Why are you here, Liz? What? Why are you here? I, I, I told you I have a contact mission. Oh, come on. You really think I believe that? What's that? Get it back. No. Why do you have a file about Dad? Beth. What is this? Terminated Wednesday, September 9th, 1987? What does this mean, Liz? I can explain. Then explain. Why is Dad terminated? Why do you have his file? Why are you here? Dad is dead, okay? Dad is dead. Yeah, I know, Liz. I've known for three months now because I have to live with it. I've had to spend day after day wishing he would come back and here you are at my door. I started to think he was out there in some other dimension, so don't tell me something I already know. Why do you have his file, Liz? Did you know that he was terminated the same day he died? Yes. I know exactly when he died. I was there. I never wanted to lie to you, but I didn't know. You lied to me? What else have you been lying to me about? I'm here to solve dad's murder. What? I believe that dad was murdered. The facts don't add up and no one has looked into anything, but he was terminated the same day he died. Stop it. In the same day as the heart attack. Shut up. In the same day as a hit and run? Wait. And the lawyers, they said he gave us the door frame. It just doesn't make sense. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? What did you just say? We got into a car accident, but he died from a heart attack. No, that's, that's crazy. Beth. That's impossible. How did it happen here? Stop it. I want to stop remembering. He's gone and... I have to accept that. Look, it's not like I want to believe it, but I need to know. No one but terminated unless they were fired or killed. How did you get this file anyways, huh? They wouldn't let you even get close. Why give you evidence? I stole it, okay, Happy? You stole it? Why come here then? I didn't know what else to do. This is serious, Liz. Is that considered a crime only where you're from or only here? Why did you drag me into all this? You're the only person that I could think of of who would believe me. The door frame pulled me here. I had to know more about Project Alternate. And I thought you would help me. Wait, did you say Project Alternate? Yeah, Project Alternate. The people who are covering up everything. Project Alternate? You mean the one at MIT? Project Alternate launched the other day. The same day you showed up at my door. That's impossible. Nothing is the same about our dimensions. Except Dad. He was in a car crash. The other car was never found, but he died from a heart attack. Liz, he was only 54. He shouldn't have died. It's, it's connected. It has to be. It's, it's too specific to be a coincidence. I don't know. If there's anything more about Dad, it's there at MIT. Except he never worked on a door frame. But he died the same exact way in both universes. It can't be a coincidence. It doesn't add up. The events of our two worlds don't add up, okay? Nothing about your world and mine should be the same. So why is dad's death the only exception? I don't know. I can't explain it. That's a first. 
I can't explain anything, okay? But I, I have to know what happened. I know, I have to know if they murdered him. You have to believe me. It doesn't add up. Please, you have to help me. We'll figure this out together. Everybody. My name is Hallie. I play Beth. This is my fourth show. My favorite role I've played is the cat in the hat. Um, shout out to my dog Phoebe. She's tiny and insane. And I've really enjoyed this play because it gives me a chance to explore my dramatic acting, which I haven't really done before. Uh, thank you for coming and enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Shatswell. I play Liz Custard in Alternate. My previous shows have been Susan Cole Jr., 13 Ways to Screw Up Your College Interview, and Radium Girls. I would like to say a huge thank you to my dad for doing a bunch of techie stuff for the show, and to Miss Severide, Allie, or the, uh, the other Allie, um, and Juliet, our sound effects person, for making the show move along through this quarantine whatever stuff and I hope you guys enjoy the show grab some popcorn and have fun <laughs> hi um, my name is Velt and I'm Ruby Custard in this play um, this is my first show at Cascade Christian previously I've been doing theater for three years back in my home country of Latvia um, I am so excited for the show and I am so thankful to be part of this cast bye Hi, my name is Allie Mitchell, and this is my first performance in theater, and I'm so glad to have the opportunity. Aside from theater, I also enjoy doing soccer. Shout out to my mom and dad being my biggest fans, and I want to thank everyone for watching the performance, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Parker Hemmings, and I play the role of Thomas Custard in the play Alternate. This is my first year in theater, and I want to give a big shout out to everyone who helped make this possible. Thanks. Hi, I am Lily Hendricks. I play General Victoria Hayes, student one, and the tour guide. I've been doing theater for roughly four years at Cascade, and I want to give a big special thanks to all of you for coming and supporting this show, our amazing writer and co-director, Allie J. Nicholson, and just all of us. I think he's a junior at Cascade Christian High School. He enjoys tennis, theater, and underwater basket weaving. He would like to thank Red Robin for fueling his many nights and Sior, his closest companion. Isaac would like to thank everyone for coming to the show tonight, and he hopes that you enjoy it. Hello, so my name is Rose, and this is my first time doing a play at CCS, and I play Mrs. Windsor, Peggy Novak, and the lawyer. And thanks to my sister in art for even making me think about going on stage again. Hi, I'm Maya. I'm a junior and I've been doing theater at Cascade since second grade. My favorite production has been Radium Girls and I would like to thank all of my castmates for being the absolute best and for always being there to have fun. Hi, my name is Willa Sakura and I'm playing the role of Lake. I've been in three Cascade Christian productions, and my favorite production was playing an interpreter and an actor for four different roles in 13 Ways to Fail a College Interview. I would like to thank my family and friends for their encouragement and support all through this difficult time with performing a play over technology. Hi, I'm Sydney Kelso, and I'm playing the counselor, Miss Hale, and student three. This is my first show at Cascade, and a uh, special thanks to my parents for helping me learn my lines and Allie Jenkelson for writing this play. Hi, my name is Allie Jenkelson, and I wrote and co-directed the play Alternate. Some of my past theater experiences include Happy Valley High, 13 Ways to Screw Up Your College Interview, Radium Girls, and Susical Jr. In the fall of 2020, I will be attending Valdosta State University in Valdosta, Georgia to study ASL interpreting and translating. Thank you to everyone who made this happen. 
Hello, my name is Ali Redford. I'm a junior and I have the privilege of stage managing the show Alternate. Um, I have stage managed two of the shows at Cascade, Sugarco, and Young Sherlock, and I've done a bunch of shows at Liquid Playhouse. Um, I have loved having the privilege to do this show even though it's not actually on stage. So it's been really cool to do it in another format and actually do it instead of it getting canceled. And I hope you like the show. Bye. I'm Juliet Goodman and I play the role of stage or the sound effects for the play Alternate. I'd like to thank everyone who encouraged me to go out for theater my first year at Cascade. One of the things that I love most about working for Cascade Christian is that everything we're doing is for advancing God's kingdom. Everything we do here at the district office impacts all the students at all the other campuses. One of the words that comes to mind when I think about Cascade Christian Schools is the word dedication. I'm often humbled at seeing the sacrifices that are being made so the love, the encouragement that is just being shared with each relationship is, it, it's truly amazing. It's sort of a small school feel, but with big school opportunities. You know, full sports programs, yeah. full um, opportunity for coursework. And at CCS, we're all about developing discerning leaders in a culture where people feel known and valued. Part of our approach to achieving that objective is through what we reference as our educational roadmap, which is simply just a process for our teachers and our staff to get to know our students on a highly personal level, to know their, their strengths, their skills, their preferences, and to partner with them in their journey to become discerning leaders. All the campuses work together so we can come together as um, a Christian family and uplift people when we need to and uplift our students and our families. I have a ton of fun here every day interacting with our kids and I think we have a really fun uh, group of people and really at the end of the day I think it's all about Jesus. I really enjoy the privilege of just coming alongside these kids and their families. We have a great time and a great school. Alternate is based off my own life. Writing is my outlet, especially when things get tough, and believe me, things get tough. My dad died last year in January, and after him, everything became a nightmare. Cheer, school, I even dropped a class to pick up creative writing independent study in Mrs. Bird's office. But I escaped to theater, and Miss Severide offered me to direct a play and I thought I'd do her one better, I'd write a play. I took my creative writing class and I just started writing and within the first month I had a draft. Even my favorite scenes are the ones where I just vent. Well, I really like to encourage student leadership in the theater department. I think it gives students an opportunity to try something they might not otherwise have a chance and maybe to develop some God-given talents and abilities. So when Ali Jankelson told me that she wanted to write a play, I jumped at the opportunity to work with a developing playwright and an amazing young woman on this brand new work of theater. So we've been working on it for about a year, a bit over a year now, and she's brought me a few drafts to look at. So I've been able to advise and watch her talent develop, and that's been such a privilege. And now she's co-directing the play with me, and I'm so excited for you all to see it. I'm sure you're gonna love it. We had no set, so all the visual humor just went out the window including all of our set changes that will show you the location. 
we compromised by having stage directions being narrated at you so that you would know where you are and what's happening and who else is there. Another challenge was some of the blocking just kind of got left out because we couldn't do it without being visually there. Another thing is I had to change a couple of lines and rewrite it as soon as I saw it because some of it was, again, visual. All the visual stuff that you would see on a stage just wouldn't have happened. Well, just like everyone else during this time, we're trying to do everything that we do in life from home. So everyone's created their own little home studio in their bedroom or whatever corner of the house they could eke out for this purpose. And so that's been a challenge and we've got um, you know, kids, dogs, chickens, all sorts of interesting things interrupting our rehearsals, but that's been really fun too. So there have been a lot of challenges, but the cast has really risen to it. And I think their performances are very nuanced and really special, and I'm really proud of you guys. Well, it definitely wasn't what I imagined, but I knew I wouldn't let this play go down without a fight. We decided that we would stage it as if it was going back on stage, and stage it as if it was going to be a Zoom production. And two rehearsals in, we got the notice that school wasn't coming back for the year, so we immediately switched to Zoom. The transition itself was kind of rough, but we got it down pretty quickly because the world is our stage. Well, we had lots of great plans for putting this show on stage with an amazing set and costumes and lots of interesting blocking uh, with the action on stage. So transitioning to a format where we're online, just looking at heads and shoulders of our actors and trying to understand how the medium of theater becomes something that's a little closer to film, but still retains its spirit of theatricality has been interesting, um, but it's also been a really fun thought experiment to try to understand a new way to create art. Well, we had an hour rehearsal every day, but we only did one scene a day. Well, that was a little bit easier since we didn't have to really worry about blocking except for in this little space. It was kind of difficult because sometimes we'd get sidetracked or sometimes people would be late or sometimes I would get a random test text being like, I can't find the link, where's the link? But in the end, it was really fun. Really, we just dove in and knew we wanted to do something with the play and figured it out as we went along. And as God has a way of doing, he provides for the needs that you don't even know you have. And in this case, we needed somebody who knew how to handle technology and we had a wonderful volunteer parent come forward, Gary Shatswell. So everything you see here, as far as the technological elements are thanks to Gary. And we are all so, so grateful, Gary, thank you.
a flashback of the lab. He's gone. James, I'm... What happened? I don't know. The door frame, it just backfired. It wasn't calibrated correctly or the atoms weren't pulled together. This was never supposed to happen. I didn't, I didn't think this would kill anyone. James, go home. What? Go home. You need to go home. No, the machine is too dangerous. We need to turn it off. But we're so close, James. No, this is the final straw. Face it, traveling to different dimensions is too dangerous. And so was landing on Mars, but we did that. We just need to recalibrate. Take in every system in organic matter and relay that to the computers. We'll pair with biology labs and more scientists. We'll figure it out. No, Lillian, we need to shut it down. We can't risk any more lives. We're so close, James. You can't just give that up now because of one mishap. A mishap? Is that what this is to you, a mishap? Was Lancaster a mishap? Look, the government is pouring in a lot of money right now. If we get this right, we can do so much good with it. We just need to get past this roadblock. And in the grand scheme of things, yes, Lancaster was just a mishap. You don't need to go through these files anymore. We know which one Miss Custard stole. I know. You and Custard were close? We were a team. That's what he always said. Well, I have some good news. Finally. We just rebooted the computers. We can get the door frame up and running. What if she doesn't want to go home? What if James is alive there? We can't have her running around an unknown dimension. We are going to bring her home, Miss Orwell. When can we boot the monitors back up? Right now. I'm going to go get her. The living room. I'm going to go grab the photos from the crash. Wait one sec. Oh, hey Beth, I was just heading out. Do you wanna come? I'll let you pick. Uh, Thomas? Yeah, who else would it be? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I just, I didn't expect to see you here. What do you mean? I live here. Uh, I, I, I mean, back from, from like, college, you know? <laughs> college? <laughs> Don't patronize me. Oh! Right, 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 right. You don't, you don't go to college. Well, one of us had to be the disappointment. You're not a disappointment. You're really smart. Sometimes smarter than me. Are you feeling okay? You're not acting Bethy. I'm, I'm fine, really. Okay, okay. Because I swear, this is the longest conversation we've had since... I grabbed the photo. Beth? Beth? What is happening? We can explain. This is exactly the widespread panic that we didn't want. Uh, who are you? And who are you? Calm down. It's just me, Beth. If you're Beth, then who is she? What is going on? Thomas, this is me from another dimension. My alternate, Liz. Should we tell him? Tell me what? What is going on? You need to promise you won't freak out. What? Will you stay calm or will you freak out? Freak out? I'm already freaking out. Promise! Okay, okay, I won't freak out. Beth is helping me solve Dad's murder. I'm telling Mom. Don't you dare. This is crazy. Does that phrase just run in the family? Let her explain, okay? I didn't believe it either. Explain? How are you going to explain all of this? In my dimension, Dad was killed in a car crash, right? We were both told it was a drunk driver. Except they were never caught. And then there was a heart attack after the initial crash. I 
thought it was sketchy, but I didn't think much of it until the lawyer showed up telling us that his invention, the door frame, was ours. The door frame? It's basically a quantum splicer that was supposed to split molecules across dimensions, but it kind of just pulled Liz to me. Okay, none of what you're saying is making any sense. English, please. It, it means the door frame teleports people, like beam me up, Skywalker. Anyways, uh, Project Alternate, the place Dad used to work, wouldn't let us get close, so I did some digging. Did you grab the picture? Here's the crime scene from Liz's dimension, and here's the one from ours. They're the same picture? Right, because they are the same. Everything in our dimensions turn out differently, so why should Dad be the only thing the same? How do you even figure this out, besides the butchering of an iconic Star Trek line? They still have new coke. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. There was a partial license plate we both remember. I told the police, but they never got back, so I had a friend run it, and we have four possible cars, all, all registered to Project Alternate. Here are the names. Private John Duran, Officer Jay Collins, Mary Gardner, and Peggy Novak. These all sound like government officials. What are they? Russians? They're all Americans. My friend checked. Novak filed a stolen report. We're thinking it might be her. But it's unlikely. How did you even get the file? Stole it, but, but that's besides the point. And that's where we are currently. <laughs> wow. I feel like I'm in the weirdest episode of Full House. How did you... Uh, did they find the car? No. What about the heart attack? Still working on it. We have no suspects other than Novak. But then again, she seems unlikely. Well, if it's not her, then it's probably somebody else working on the project. Do you have a list of co-workers? No. And I can't go back to my dimension. I'm probably a fugitive there. Wait, what? What? I stole a file full of government secrets. And we can't use the door frame here. It's not finished. But there is a singularity that I came through. It won't be open for long, and once I go back, that's it. Game over. The project will shut me up unless I have proof that they murdered Dad. They did it once, they can do it again. Okay, how long you got? Until Friday. <laughs> that's the time frame you're working on? Two days? Two days is barely enough time to comprehend all of this, let alone solve a murder. That's all we have. Wait a minute. Do you think Dad's death is the same because of the doorframe? Maybe, why? Well, if it's because of the doorframe, Project Alternate would be the same, give or take, right? I don't understand. MIT just launched Project Alternate. I bet they have a list of people working in the doorframe. If our theory is correct... Then it's the same in both dimensions. One sec. Liz, go hide. Mom? What are you doing? Yeah, Beth? Um, how are you doing, sweetie? I'm doing much better, thank you. I'm glad. I was wondering if we could take a drive to MIT tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I mean, but you hate driving. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I do. I just, you know, I really wanted to see it again, and... I, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, totally. Um, yeah, that sounds like fun, and I can pick you up early from school, and we can stop by that cafe shop you used to love. Yeah. Totally. Thanks, Mom. Well, that was new. <laughs> Shut up. I need to get in there. Hold up. What? What? What part of let's go to MIT wasn't clear? The part where you're talking about finding a list of people. What happens if you're caught? We're talking about Dad. You're risking it all for a theory. What if it's not even true? What if it is? Even if it is true, you have one day to figure it out. One singular day. Better than nothing. Beth, think about this. It's dad. I want to know what happened to him as much as anyone else does. But if Liz's theory is correct, dad was murdered in both dimensions. Please, Thomas, trust me on this. So, how are we going to do this? Windsor's classroom. Hey, 
right, Beth, you look really tired. I pulled another all-nighter. Finally start on that English project? No, just um, can't sleep. It's that other project, isn't it? The one about alternate dimensions? Alternate dimensions? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of um, research. What about the test or the English project? Or sleep. Why do you two always forget about sleep? I've got this. A couple all-nighters isn't going to kill me. It's just another hard week, but I'm doing okay. Beth, that's not good. Yeah, I know. You told me you were doing fine. I am. Look, I don't want to talk about this, okay? Miss Custard, can I see you for a second? Beth walks over to Windsor's desk. Is there a problem? How are you doing, Beth? Why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm fine. Just wanted to talk to you about the test you took. I got a zero. Beth, you're a smart kid, but... These answers were seriously out there. You didn't know who Lincoln was. And in your short answer, uh, you said that we, the America was the DRA? The DRA, the Democratic Republic of America. Technically, you're right. But here we call it the United States of America. You can always retake it, but I think you need a little time to reconnect yourself. I'm fine, thanks. Beth starts walking back towards Maxine and Lake. Student one and student three intercept. Hey, I heard about what happened. We are so sorry. What's there to be sorry for? I can retake the test. No, about your dad? I am so sorry for your loss. What? If you ever need anybody, just know. I'm always here for you. You've suffered so much. Who told you about Dad? Well, I heard it from Amy, who heard it from Jesse, who was told by Mark that Maxine told me that your dad died because I thought you were being rude and... And I was worried about you not coming to chess. So I asked around and Maxine told me what was going on. We're all here for you, Beth. Beth storms over to Maxine. Were you telling everyone about Dad behind my back? They were just worried, B. Be happy we want to help. Jeez. I told you not to. You promised you wouldn't. Why does it matter so much? It matters to me. Look, you've been acting distant and odd lately, and people were asking around. I gave them the truth, so you didn't have to. You're welcome. I'm calling it. That's a lie, and you and I both know it. You're always ha- complaining about having a hard day. Well, newsflash, everyone has it hard. You're sitting here feeling sorry for yourself, and so many people have it so much worse. People have it worse? Maxine, I don't have a dad anymore. And there are some people who have their dreams crushed. Get over it like the rest of us. All right. Oh, you didn't hear? MIT rejected me. Yeah, your life isn't the only thing that's hard. MIT rejected you? Lake, this isn't the time to play catch-up. I'm sorry. That sucks. That's it? That sucks? Not even a little pity? Oh, right. You're too busy pitying yourself to notice anyone else around you. I'm getting sick of it. You're getting sick of it? Yeah, MIT sucks. It really does. And I get how important that was to you, but you can always apply again. Maxine, I don't get a second chance ever. Get over yourself. Miss Custard, where are you going? To MIT, with or without you. Hey, Beth, wait. This is your fault. If you would just listen to Beth and- Beth was being a jerk. You were being worse. She needed us now more than ever. (laughs) No, she doesn't. You heard her, with or without us. No, with or without you. I'm gonna fix this. A tour guide is taking a group of students around MIT. 
Liz and Thomas stand further from the group in bad disguises. You didn't talk in the car and now you're ignoring me? What's there to talk about? Well, I'm, you seem fine this morning. You know what? I don't want to talk about it. And here we have the Pierce Laboratory where MIT's engineering program is based. Our engineering program is ranked highest nationwide. Wow, doesn't that sound exciting? <laughs> oh, hello, Professor Orwell. Ladies and gentlemen, here is one of the professors here at our school and head of the recently launched Project Alternate, Lillian Orwell. Professor, would you like to give these prospecting students some words of wisdom? Yes, of course. Um, well, first things first, get to know your uh, lab partners. You never know how long they're gonna stick around. What else? Remember closed toed shoes? Ah, uh, yes, closed toed shoes, very important. And remember, don't lose your files. They're hard to recover. And the same goes with homework. See, one time I had five minutes to turn the assignment in, so I had to sprint to the computer lab all the way across campus to print my paper. And by the time I had gotten to class, I had left it in the printer. <laughs> yes, very unfortunate. Thank you, Miss Orwell. Let's go take a look see inside the an olive garden, shall we? Let's go say hi for a second. Mom, please don't. I just wanna go say hi. It has been such a long time, Lillian. Ruby, it's been a couple of months, hasn't it? I haven't seen you since the funeral. Oh, um, where's my manners? Um, this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Yes, it's so nice to meet you. Is there anything I can do? Um, we're managing, but I don't think there's anything you need to trouble yourself with. He really loved you. He talked about you all the time. Thanks. Are you looking at um, here? Yeah, MIT's always been my dream school. Yes, she's following in her dad's footsteps. What? Um, yeah, your dad worked up here with Lillian um, on the one project. Um, Lillian, what was it called? Project Alternate. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, Project Alternate, that's the one. Dad didn't tell me he worked at MIT. Uh, he never told you? No. I, I mean, well, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't expect him to, knowing that it's practically all classified, and I'm surprised I could even remember the name. He talked about it so little. But he didn't tell me. I wanted to go here and he didn't tell me? We kept a lot of it on lock. I wouldn't expect him to. Dad never told me. Well, it was really nice to see you, and I would love to have you over for dinner. It was nice to see you again, Ruby. And Liz, it was so nice to meet you. Beth. Excuse me? Everyone calls me Beth. My mistake. I hope to see you here next year, Beth. Oh, it looks like everyone went in. Let's get up. You go on ahead. I need to find a bathroom. I'll, I'll catch up to you. Let's go before she comes back again. They enter a lab and start going through files. It suspiciously looks like the lab from Liz's dimension. Ah, here we go. Jeez, they need to organize. Lillian Orwell, Robert Killian, Brenda Adams, Julia Norm, James Custard. He did work up here. James Cut, or let me see that. James Custard. Terminated Wednesday, September 9th, 1987. No, 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 no. This can't be right. He didn't walk up here. Beth. Beth, what is happening? I can't breathe. Oh no, not again. Beth. This is some huge mistake. He, he didn't work here. Beth. <sighs> Back at the Custard's house. 
he didn't walk on the door for him. He would have told us. Beth, what, what happened at the lab? What was that? I think our connection is getting stronger. What? I, we had a panic attack. My body just shuts down on itself. I kept thinking about the crash and I'm sorry I left you there. It's okay. We'll figure this out together. I've got to get to school. It's Friday. Try and piece it together. Tell me if you guys find anything immediately. Are you okay? Oh, I'm great. Everything is just fine. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. It's just, I feel like I've had to step up and be the man of the house for mom and Beth, but I don't think I can do this. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to help us with this. You don't have to be dad. You can just be Thomas. Thanks. So, I've been thinking about the heart attack. It just doesn't fit, you know? It got me thinking. I remember doing this lab a while ago. It's about vaccines, but that's not the important part. You see, when you don't get all the air out of a syringe, injecting air into a vein mimics... A heart attack. Thomas, you're a genius. This must be the security footage. I don't think that's Novak. They're wearing a lab coat and look at what they're holding. Oh my goodness, that's file. I have to go. What, where are you going? The woman from yesterday, something about it just didn't seem right. Go find Beth. Liz leaves to find Beth. We are now in the school hallway. I gotta go. Hey, watch it, Beth. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, do I know you? Oh, we're in the ignoring phase? Two can play at that game. Okay. Hey, Beth, what are you rushing around for? Like, oh, nothing. Bus doesn't start for another seven minutes. You're good. Oh, uh, chill. How are you? Can I ask you a really weird question? Yeah, go for it. Uh, where, where is... I mean, can, can you walk me to my first class? It's, it's just been a really uh, a hard week and I, I, I just want a friend to go with me before going to that um, awful, awful, dreadful class. Art is dreadful? Yeah, that, that's right. It's, it's awful. I always walk with you to first though. Right, right, thanks. Beth. How are you really? You seemed off all week. A lot has been happening. It's, it's just been a hard week. You keep saying that. I'm worried. Can we talk about this later? Yeah. Please. Sure. What are you doing? Uh, following you to art. That's art right there. Oh, right. Silly me. I, it's, I, it's just so dreadful that I, that I forgot. Oh, Lake. Mm -hmm. Thanks for walking me to class. It was really sweet of you. No problem. What are friends for? <laughs> Beth! 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 What? What's happening? Were you seen? Yeah, by Lake and some mean girl. Great. What'd you find? Look, that's definitely Dad's file, and the syringe explains the heart attack. Dad's file was classified. I had to steal it, but this is someone from the higher-ups. They're the only ones that had access. But we still don't have a suspect, unless... Thomas already figured it out. Lillian Orwell. Liz, this is not good. Liz? She was there yesterday. She's coming for me. I know it. Research into everything you know about her. I'll try to do as much of it here as I can. Got it. Uh, uh, oh, so sorry, uh, mean girl. It's all right. Beth? MIT campus. 
Well, where are you? We've been looking everywhere. Apparently here me is a professor at Commonwealth Institute. The door frame pulled me to her, but I have good news. About the custard girl? Yes, I think I found her, or at least hear her. She was on how the was, floor. How was that good news? We were all pulled to hear us, right? So the same probably happened to Liz. We really need a different word than hear whatever. That doesn't matter. The point is, if we find hear her, we find Liz. I could use with the school pulled together to track her or hear her and corner them. Liz, I'm running. That's a little extreme, don't you think? Novak, do we want to get Liz back or not? We have to think extreme. I'm with Novak. We can explain to here, Elizabeth, what's going on and find Miss Custard peacefully. We don't want a widespread panic. Liz doesn't listen to reason. We need to use force. She is only a teenager. She's just scared. And we should give her something to be scared about. She messed with my project and she should receive the consequences. Lillian, we have to stop this. We are not going to threaten her over this. We are only here to get her home safely. This is a child who messed with my entire research. She's the danger to everyone at Project Alternate. Why? She, she has our file. That file is the least of our worries. We aren't threatening a minor for Custard's information. Fine. I'm going to see what they've pulled together here. See if I can track Liz's movements. I don't like Liz going, Novak. Trust me, we just have to get to Liz before she does. And if we don't? Liz is a smart girl. She'll know what to do. This is bad. The school library. Uh, uh, hello, Miss Librarian. It's Miss Hale. I'm assuming you're Liz. I need I need some more free books, like only the paper news books. A newspaper? Okay, that's what they're called. I didn't know if you guys use the same word or. Well, we have the school newspaper saved, but not like the New York Times. But you can use our brand new computer lab to search up the district catalog. Why would you need a laboratory for computers? Liz sits down at a computer. Orwell, Orwell. Hello, Miss Hale. Have you seen Beth recently? No, I have not. But I could have sworn she came in here. Oh, you must not have met Liz yet. She's over there. Liz? Oh, right, Liz. May I sit here? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm Maxine. What's your name? Elizabeth, Beth for short. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Liz. Can I call you Liz instead? Cool. Not to be really weird, but I could have sworn there's another girl who looks exactly like you. Are you sure you don't have a twin? Uh, I'm, I'm sure. Uh. Like, I'm, I'm mostly sure, unless, of course, I do have a twin that I never knew of, or a clone. What am I saying? Of course it would be a twin that I, that I have no idea about. What are you doing, Liz? Stuff. What kind of stuff? Super cool stuff you wouldn't understand. Like alternate universes? <laughs> Al alternate universes? What? No, that, that, that's crazy. Why would he know? That it's super crazy. Yeah. Hello, Miss Hale. Uh, can I use one of the computers? I have something I need to look up. Almost as crazy as two bets in the same room. Well, I, I've got to go. It was nice meeting you. Liz grabs a paper and runs out the door. Beth sits down at a different computer. Orwell, Orwell. Hey, Beth. What do you want? Nothing, nothing. What are you working on? My admission essay. <laughs> That's funny, because that doesn't look like an essay. Research. Also funny, I just saw a girl who looks exactly like you researching the same thing. 
Liz seems really nice. Liz? Oh, you've met. Tell me who she is. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, I want answers, Beth. Is this why you've been acting weird? I can't tell you that, Maxine. Why not? You have no idea what's going on. Tell me. Why won't you just tell me what's going on? Just tell me. No. So that's it. You're just going to throw me away like that because you won't tell me who this girl is. Yes. Windsor's classroom. Beth and Lake are separated from Maxine. Okay, this time, turn in all your tests to the box and I'll see you all on Monday. Maxine gets up and beelines towards Lake. I did horribly. How'd you do? What do you want, Maxine? I figured out why Beth is acting weird. Apparently there's this girl and... I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but don't you want to know why Beth is acting weird? Yeah, I do, but not from you. Hey, Beth. Wait up. Can we talk? I really have to get home. Uh, can we talk about it later? No, I'm worried about you. Then don't worry. You've been acting really weird and you and Maxine aren't talking and now you're ignoring me. What is going on? You can tell me. You wouldn't understand. Even if I can, I will still try. You're my best friend, B. You want to know what I found out the other day? My dad worked at MIT. He worked there and I never knew about it. So what if he worked at MIT? This is why I said you wouldn't understand. You don't realize how much the small things hurt. The small things hurt so much more. I knew he was an engineer, but knowing that he was in a building that I want to spend the next four years of my life in is so much worse. So that's so what? I'm sorry. Stop saying you're sorry. This is why I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want their pity. I don't want their sorries. Everyone says they're sorry, but what are they sorry for? Are they sorry that my dad is dead? Yes. Or are they sorry that they have to deal with the pieces now? That they're now in the aftermath and they're sorry that I had to lose so much and you have to deal with it now. Well, what do you want me to say then? I'm sorry I can't say more than I'm sorry. You don't get it. You never get it. Nobody gets it. What don't I get? Explain it to me. I'm going home. Beth, explain it to me. What is going on? B. My dad was murdered! That's what I found out this week. My dad was murdered. Beth. No! Stop it. You're going to say, I'm sorry. I don't want your pity. I'm going home going home, and I'm solving a murder. Wait, Beth. <sighs> hey, kiddo. Dad. Been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to solve your murder and everything. <sighs> Thank goodness. I thought I would go and avenged. Dad, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know if I'm doing good or bad, and I'm, I'm really far away from home. And I miss you. I miss you so much, Dad. I miss you every single day, and it hurts. You were everything to me, and they stole it. They stole everything. I know. But you know what? I am so proud of you. You have come so far. I remember you at your first science fair. You had this toothy grin when I saw you and at your sixth grade graduation. I fell up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, you did. But the more I think about it, the more I miss you. But you have someone to share it with. Is that why it hurts so much more because Beth reminds me of you? Hey, B. Dad? 
Dad, everything is awful. I don't know what I'm doing and everyone hates me. And it's been so hard. I want you back so much. It'll be okay. It'll be okay because you have Thomas and your mom, you have Liz, and they will always be with you. No, they won't. Yes, they will always be there for you. I remember you (laughs) at your first piano recital. You played this song you had been practicing all week long and somehow managed to hit all of the wrong notes. Why are you telling me this? Because you have to remember. You have to remember me, every aspect that I remember you. I don't want to remember. What do you want? I want to know who did this to me. I want to know who let this happen to me. Remembering you only makes it harder. Remembering me makes it worthwhile. Dad, no. Do you remember when I took you skiing and you flew down the mountain? Don't leave again. Do you know what I thought that day? What? That you would be just fine on your own. Look at you. I was right. Wait, please don't leave me. You should be here for my graduation. Drop me off at college, walk me down the aisle, please. I need you to be there. You are always there, there for whatever. I can't do this without you, please. Please don't leave me again. I just want one more science fair, another recital, one more ski trip. I want you back for just one more car ride. Just one more car ride. One where we can sing terribly. And tell ghost stories. And go for pizza. And drive around town, please. One more car ride. I would do anything for just one more, one more car ride. The Custard Living Room. Beth, I got it. Dad wanted to shut the project down, and I found this article in the library about this guy named Lancaster who was killed by the door frame. It makes sense. Orwell didn't want to stop it, and... Liz? Beth, what's wrong? Please don't leave. What? I know you can't stay, and I know it's unfair, but I have nobody left. Tell me what happened. I got into a fight with my friends. Nobody gets it, and I have to deal with it all on my own. And you're the closest thing to dad I have left, so please don't leave me, too. I have to. I don't know how long I can stay, but I'm, I'm never leaving you. We're connected, remember? We're connected by dad, by the doorframe, by each other. I'm never leaving you. I can't accept that. I'll build the doorframe myself if it means you won't go. Hold on. I'm going to try something. Do you remember the ski trip? I've never been skiing. Yeah, I do. I can feel it. Good. We're connected and and we always will be. I'm going to be waiting. I'll be at the bottom of the mountain and you'll, I'll be waiting for you. I'll be there and you'll just be just fine on your own until you find me again. Dad used to say that. I know. Dad would be proud of you. Of us. I'm going to see you again. Someday. Okay, um, what were you saying about Orwell? So get this, Lancaster died in a freak malfunction. Dad, Dad wanted to shut it down, but Orwell didn't. The only way to get rid of the shutdown was to get rid of the person shutting it down. Everything is here. Orwell's faulty testimony, the security footage, the stolen car report. She was covering up everything. I'm going to go back home. We need to get you back to the singularity. Where is it? Uh, it, it may or may not be at your school. What? I told you, I I didn't exactly wander around Lexington. I was wandering around Lexington High School. You weren't lying when you said the doorframe pulled us together. I guess alternates attract. 
Let's get going. <laughs> I'll grab the file. Beth and Liz wander around the high school halls. This is so much creepier at night. All we have to do is find the singularity and then boom, I'm back home. Where is it then? Good question. I'm working on it. Beth? Like. Beth, what are you doing? Chess club just ended. Ah. Uh, it, it kind of just slipped my mind. <laughs> well, it didn't really slip my mind. Your mind can't slip. That, that would be crazy. Look, Beth, I'm really sorry for earlier, and I know it wasn't called for, but I just want to look out for you because you're my best friend, and I may not know how to be there for you, but I do know how to be your friend. Like, And I know I've been doing awful at that. I let Maxine gossip, and I joked around one too many times, and it wasn't okay, and I wanted to apologize, and I know that you'll probably never forgive me, and I'm fine with that. I just want you to be happy. I forgive you. Well, 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 but, but you and her and what? I figured you would want to know you were talking to the wrong Elizabeth. What the heck is going on? Oh my goodness, you've been cloned. I'm not a clone. Lake, this is Liz. She's my alternate. Hi. Hi, cloned Beth. Is this why you've been acting strange all week? What can I say? It's been a hard week. I get it now. I knew it. There are two of you. And all this time you've been acting weird because of her. And I think it was ever my fault. The whole school is going to flip when they find out that Beth was hiding whatever she is this whole time. Okay. What? Go tell the whole school. Tell the whole school. I was hosting a fugitive from an alternate dimension that helped me solve my dad's murder. A fugitive? Oh, this is good. You're a war criminal now, too? I never thought you'd go this far. Yeah, sure, but who's going to believe this? I know I wouldn't. I'm sure the government would be all over your story about a top secret project. Top secret? Top secret. Jail? Guantanamo Bay. You'd be locked up for the rest of your life if you even let one word slip about Liz. So don't you dare. <laughs> we need to find the singularity now. Hide. Come on out, Liz. I'm just here to talk. Who is that? This is bad. Beth, who is that? Lillian Orwell. What do we do? All I want is that file, Liz, and we can all go home safe and sound. No one needs to get hurt. We need to split up. What? No, that's a horrible idea. What's the other option? She has a point. You ever see Scooby-Doo? Yeah. The dog from the mystery machine? Things are making so much more sense now. Okay, gang. Split up in three, two, one. Gotcha. Orwell grabs Beth. Get off me, you little brat. Help me! Help! Beth! Oh, great. There's two of them, and it figures this isn't even the right one. Let her go! Or what? What are you going to do about it? You know, I was always overshadowed by your father. Now I'm overshadowed by you, his little brat. You think you're so clever for popping over here with your little file, but it's over now. Give it to me. Elizabeth, give me the file. Is that why you did it? What? Is that why you killed my dad? How did you get that idea? Has traveling universes made you completely lose your mind? I should take you back right now and have you put into an asylum. No, a file told me. The file, of course the file. The file told you everything, everything. It didn't tell you how I was always in your shadow, did it? 
Did it tell you how he wanted to give up on everything he, I worked for? What? Did it tell you he was a coward? He deserved everything that happened to him. And so do you, you ungrateful little brat. Beth, are you okay? You're a monster. We're going home now. Get away from my sisters. Thomas. What's going on? Lily and Orwell, you're under arrest for the murder of James Custard. There has to be some mistake, General. I would never kill anybody. This no. is a huge misunderstanding. No, I assure you this is not. Novak, care to explain? Novak? As in Peggy Novak? Certainly. I gave Miss Custard the file. Wait, what? You? You gave her the file? Why? Well, originally, to bring closure, Miss Custer had contacted me about a su suspicion of foul play, so I started to dig. Why? You stole my car. I gave Miss Custer more information under the guise of closure, so this, so the project would be off my back. I found it, the car, by the way, along with a syringe that I'm sure will have your fingerprints all over them. Only when I found this boy here did I understand what it all meant. You were right. Novak approached me, told me to keep an eye on anything suspicious. You started acting odd once you realized the file was gone. So I started digging into your story with everyone focused on the doorframe. I collected evidence. Are you two okay? I think we're fine. Let's get moving before the singularity closes. Wait, I need to say goodbye. Don't take too long. You did good. I'm proud. I'm sorry about all this, like... It's all good, clone Beth. Yeah, it's chill. Oh, I just got that. I was wondering why you kept saying that. <laughs> I, I hope I meet you again. Me too. Wait, is now a good time to say I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids? <laughs> well, bye. Hey, Thomas. Hey, don't get into too much trouble over there. I promise. My troublemaking days are over. I'll keep my toes and cl everything clean. Thank you so much. You led us straight to her. It was nothing. Oh, and tell alternate me to get his act together. <laughs> I'll send my love. So, this is it? Yeah, it is. What does this mean now? I go back to my dimension. I tell the whole world what Orwell did. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too. I'll see you again. Someday. I promise. Liz takes one last look at her friends before passing through the singularity. Dear Liz, this is day one at MIT. Don't worry, I'm making a lot of new friends. I'm keeping tabs on Project Alternate. I might go steal a file. I'll keep you posted. Dear Beth, I ran into Alternate Lake. She seems pretty chill. We're in a study group together, history go figure. Dear Liz, Lillian Orwell has been arrested over here. You were right. Dear Beth, Thomas is coming home today, which is exciting. He wants to show me his new project on biochemistry and vaccines. Dear Liz, I got accepted to Project Alternate. The lab manager was showing me around and told me about a spirit box they used to use. It reminded me of you somehow. I'm half tempted to use it. Dear Beth, the trial is today. I'm going to have to testify. I wish you were here with me. Please state your full name for the court. My name is Elizabeth Marie Custard. Why did I come to Project Alternate? Simple. And Miss Custard, do you know what you are here for? One year ago, 
my dad was murdered. Yes. And how did you obtain this information? Miss Novak gave me a file for closure. It never gets easier to talk about him. And you solved this case by yourself? Not by myself. But a year ago, I found my alternate. I wanted him back so badly that I tore a hole in space to find him again. I found myself within a girl who was so far from home and farther from any family. What I found was myself. The doorframe brought us together. The doorframe tears us apart. I miss my dad every day, but I just remember a ski trip instead. A perfect snowy day with a little girl racing down a mountain, knowing that she will make it to the bottom. Today, I represent Project Alternate. I represent my peers, colleagues, friends, and most importantly, my dad. Today, I represent the doorframe. I'm going to make it. As Neil Armstrong once said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My dad was murdered by Lillian Orwell. She threatened me and my alternate. I am pleased to say that I will be making this leap. I'll never let him go. I'll never let my alternate go. Because I'll see you again. Someday. Both girls meet in center. They embrace. Lights out.